My name is uh, Michelangelo. I'm a fine artist, and I work um, basically only uh, with painting. I've been uh, an artist for 20 years, and uh, all, mo most often um, I would like to uh, create, create my painting uh, in my normal days. And then I do teach, I do write, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy from, with my life. And so uh, I'm also happy to be here with uh, Baroka. Uh, did I pronounce correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I'm happy to uh, be in the show with, with everyone. Sure, sure. Hello, thank you, and thank you for having me. Um, I'm Baroka Kopatz. Um, I am a Transylvanian artist. Um, it's been a very long journey for me to claim my, um, my art. Um, I've been painting since I'm a child, and I took a huge detour in design um, because I didn't trust myself. Um, I thought I wasn't you know, good enough, and so uh, I've been in this illusion of society, society's lure that you need to earn a living and that needs to be a job. So the most creative part I could do was really going into design, um, but at the same time, I studied fine art as, um, as a second degree. Uh, so here I am today, claiming being an artist, uh, and I'm honored to be with you, Andrew. Seeing your work touched my heart and uh, gives us hope. So thank you very much. Thank you. You're too kind. Uh, yes, I think it's uh, it's a general problem. Even you're an artist or you're not artist. Um, but I generally, I when I think about this uh, about inspiration, I would um, think about because inspiration is an abstract uh, concept. Um, usually, when you say someone got inspired to do something or create something. Uh, but if they didn't do that, what's the problem? Is that really you don't have inspiration? Or you, you have inspiration, but you're afraid to uh, carry out that thought? I would think, uh, I read a book, it's called uh, The Art of Fear. It's, uh, it's about everyone has an idea to create something or want to do something. But generally, what happens uh, when you have an idea but you, 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 uh, you don't know how to, or, or you don't want to do that because you want to make it perfect. Um, that is, that explains a lot uh, when people have, uh, they think they don't have idea. But just they have an idea, they would second, second guess uh, themselves. Maybe that idea not good enough. So I think that is the main problem, the lack of idea. But maybe I digress. But yes, I do have moments uh, with that, like that. So how about uh, Baroka? Yeah, it's, it's so interesting you're, you're talking about this because um, I, as, as, a, as a past with design, I realize how it's a lot about ambition in the world. Are you ambitious enough? But then there is a difference between being ambitious and being inspired. Inspiration is free. Inspiration is joy, it's coming from, from a different place. Meanwhile, ambition is coming from the mind, from I have to do this because it's expected of me, or I want to show the world. So that's ambition and then inspiration. I feel like once we let go of the ambition and once we let go of what people think of us, 
and just we are true and aligned and we dare to claim that, then there will be no shortage of inspiration or no shortage of idea. The shortage comes just when you say when we are in fear, when we are not trusting the thoughts that we have, when we don't trust our inspiration. It's, oh, maybe it's just too silly that what I'm thinking. People will, what will they say if I do, if I paint this? They think I'm crazy or these are just thoughts that are not serving your art. So yeah, I think once you're aligned, you get inspired and you trust it, then there's no lack of ideas because you have everyday experiences. I don't know where are your ideas coming from? Like, how do you decide that today I'm gonna paint Botticelli's Venus? Uh, how, what touches you or where is this, this inspiration coming from for you, Andrew? For me to create this? Uh, should we go, go back to the question? <laughs> or should I answer for Roka? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Most often, um, I think idea, my, my general uh, idea should come from, I, I, would, um, I would look for ideas. Most often I would look, uh, look at other people's art. Um, most, most of the time it's the artists that I respect or maybe I think I can do a better job and then I will do my version of it. And, but the, but the more, more important thing is uh, if I can, I, if, I, um, if I think I could communicate through making this work with, um, with anyone, who will look at the art. So, yeah, for, for instance, this one is uh, based on the Italian painting, The Birth of Venus. So I would look at, uh, if I could com communicate with, um, f I mean, through painting this work with a different light, with a different method, but based on the, the work, because the work, uh, everyone knows. If I paint something that is with the images that is uh, unknown, um, that I, I, I just think that would communicate better with an image that everyone knows. Yeah, that's my uh, usually my inspirations from looking from other people's art. Yeah, and how about you? Yeah, it reminds me of, of Picasso who always thought that, you know, we always look at each other's work and, and we learn from it and that in a way, you know, what is copying? It's not copying because you digest it, it's yours, you took it in, it's your perspective, perspective your perception. Um, so I, I love what you're saying. For, for me, for example, this painting, um, it really comes from my inner truths in that period of life. So let's say in that period of life, often it comes from meditation because I meditate almost every day. And so during meditation, there would be thoughts coming up, concepts coming up, uh, colors would come up that I think they are resonating with me in that moment, so I would just go with it and explore those concepts and see how would that look like if I paint it. So it's a bit more self-absorbed <laughs> in a way that, yeah, it is, it is selfish and I realize it's a good selfish. It's the kind of selfish that it's more about learning who you are. And I realize the more I learn about myself, I'm the same as you, I'm the same as others. So there's nothing, selfish actually is not that selfish because I'm realizing there's so much more things that connect us just by knowing who I am. Meanwhile, before when I was more in design, I think I was more in the ego mind at that time. I thought I was so interesting <laughs> at that time. And I realized I'm not that interesting, I'm not better or worse but just who I am, it's enough. 
Um, so I started to paint exactly what I feel, exactly how I, what the images that come up to my mind. And those are abstract at this stage. Um, I'm open. I'm open when new ideas come up to, to change and evolve. Um, the question is the, the special situation for inspiration. I do, I do have a story because uh, inspiration could come from yeah, various situations. Uh, when I work on uh, this series, I have about 30 paintings that look exactly like this. Um, before I paint this body of work, I have about a hundred with um, a body of work that is based on exist photograph. Often it's from popular culture, and then I just paint them in monochrome, usually black and white, and very large, very large. Uh, sometimes it's a, a base, uh, it's a painting based on Ma uh, Marilyn Monroe's uh, movie still. Sometimes it's uh, Audrey Hepburn. Various uh, photographs from the popular culture. And then I, I, did rem I do remember that very vividly. One day I have a friend who have a friend knows someone who is very high up from Christie and that friend told me that maybe that guy could help help me out on whatever I don't even remember the reason and then I go to his office and meet my friend and him the Christie someone and then I I sit down and they and that guy starts telling me all sorts of reasons that my previous body of work wouldn't work, wouldn't sell. I was uh, at the time that is before pandemic. If you in the room, you could see my face start to change. I will literally punch that guy because I have worked on that body of work over two years. That is my life work at the time. I know what I'm doing. I have been doing this for almost 20 years uh, up to that point. And my work this this sell. And then he, he, he would list all kinds of reasons why my my that body of work couldn't sell. Maybe maybe it's correct because um, he, he, he worked on that field, but I was so angry. I just, I just think, okay, if, if you know what you, if, if, if you, you said so, maybe I could learn something from it. Learn something from it. So I start to um, think, okay, what can I change from this? And then I could, uh, I start to, uh, work on a method that is I think is not easier. At that time it's pretty much is it didn't take much work when I do a large body of work based on photograph. But I can produce a lot in a year but it, at the same time it, it, it looks it, it might be looks like uh, the same. Okay so so that is the, the, the moment that inspired me to do a better job. So, um, and then I start painting, uh, essentially it's the same thought. It's based on someone else's image, but I would break them down like a puzzle with different colors. So yeah, I have another body of work. And then later on, I do have 
much more body of work with much more color, much more complex uh, 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 composition. But uh, yeah, I hope I didn't digress with that. Where one of my ideas comes from, that is from a little punch uh, to the person's face. For he he, he give me advice. He, he probably know what he's talking about, but yeah, I think it does uh, inspire me to the better. Wow, I'm I'm so touched you're saying this because you started to tell the story, and I was almost like, how dare he? <laughs> you 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 know you've been doing this. It's your art. It's what you feel that is true, and probably it was true right until that moment. And then you were able to see it, you were willing to see it from a different perspective, not from the ego mind. You were willing to take the advice, you were willing to extract the learning from those comments. And that brought you to a different level of art making that the way you were just not saying that, yeah, it wasn't easier, it became more complex. but. Do you feel that it was a good thing that you took the advice? Def definitely it's a good thing. And uh, that before that one, I was always staying in the com more comfort zone. Uh, because when you, do, when you do the same style over and over again, right, it's, it's, it, it's more comfortable. But if... Uh, and. Yeah, if you would change that thought and have... It, it's literally into the unknown because you, you, you have to build the, uh, my body of work over again. So yes, uh, I do think it's a necessary step, but I also... Uh, it's really frustrating when someone says your two years work is worth nothing and eventually I just sold almost all of those works that he, he said it wouldn't sell but uh, in this case I did looking back like in, 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 in retrospect him, him saying that and, 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 and making me take these steps to change is is a very what's the word um, rare moment that I could have and did very helpful you know, to my career. Yeah, I, I do agree. Yes. Yeah, I'm really touched because um, my my mentor actually at university at Poly U he used to tell us that you have a few moments in your life that are big. And he was telling me at that time that this is your moment now. Make the action, make the leap, take, take it on. Um, and he actually told me that he had three, four moments in his life and now he's in his 50s saying he can remember when he made big decisions. And it sounds like this meeting with this person, it was one of the big moments. Yeah, I think so. You have said you, you have fam uh, similar moments? Yeah, like one of the moments was, was really reconnecting with, um, with my mentor from my postgrad at PolyU um, and showing him my work, um, my art. And he thought I'm going to be a designer, <laughs> urban designer, environment designer. Um, but then, since we are thinking in a very philosophical way, it doesn't really matter whether you're a designer or an artist or a banker until you do what's true to you. Um, and this is how you can bring um, joy to the world. So for me, that was around two years ago. You're talking about 20 years. I'm talking about two years <laughs> that I started, um, started saying daring to say that this is what I want to do and this is what I'm going to do. Um, and this moment of inspiration, you know, even just reaching out, deciding that I'm going to reach out for a studio space where I can paint, that I outgrew my room. I don't know whether you can still remember those, 
those days of your life. Um, but really accelerated growth and like one exhibition and then another exhibition and meeting people and it's just this is so inspiring to be part of it and seeing that as my body of work grows and my inspiration uh, is accessed every day like literally every day is magic since I dared today to step on this on this path so I'm at the beginning of it um, I'm learning I'm listening and I allow the inspiration to take over. Yeah. Hi. 嗰、那個嗱，嗰、那個嗰、那個其實嗰啲形狀咧，那個 idea 係 from 一塊鏡，佢就變咗一個碎片化。咁但係其實跟住然之後，我還呢個系列嗰陣咧，我就冇 exactly base on 一個，即係頭先我講將塊鏡變咗碎片化，就只不過咧，如果喺呢度睇咧，啊、嗯，我就係將嗰個愛神維納斯嗰張畫。咁我就你如果咁睇，其實有啲似萬花糖。咁就如果係我畫嗰陣咧，你話有冇一個既定嘅 idea？ 我係想誒睇嗰張畫嗰個人，佢想 get 到啲乜嘢咧？咁係冇嘅。我只係知道一樣嘢咧，就係、是、愛神維納斯。呢、这、呢個 image 咧，應該大部分人都即係至少，如果你有 aware， 你去博物館啊、誒、呃、藝術史啊，你會 aware 有呢呢、这個公仔，愛神維納斯呢個公仔嘅。咁我就利用咗呢樣嘢，咁只不過我擠落咗一個視覺嘅誒、呃、元素，就係佢好似一塊鏡打爛咗。然之後佢就有即係同一個嘅頭咧，佢就重複咗幾次。咁我另外我有啲 motif 咧，即係誒有啲誒、呃、叫做特色啦，就係、是、個 bandy dot 同埋呢啲 line 咧，其實就係因為我呢個係我始終我 work on 咧，其實我我啲誒、呃、作品咧都係非常 contemporary、呃、contemporary pop 嘅，即係當代波普藝術。個意思就係咧，我係嗰個古仔係講翻而家嘅流行文化，咁就包括係 art history 啦、popular culture 啦。咁然之後咧，呢啲波點其實係非常翻 Roger Lichtenstein 嘅。Roger Lichtenstein 即係嗰個誒美國嗰個藝術家，佢有啲波點嘅多多，同埋有啲有啲線，咁就經常重複翻出嚟咧，就變咗我嗰個波點嘅 work。你一睇咧，就覺得咦係。屬於同一個系列嘅，咁呢個係嗰個視覺元素咯。唔知答唔答到你個問題啊？係啊，好多謝啊，你頭，但係再再有冇人想問啊？布洛克問題啊？呢位Thank you. Um, I don't know because uh, the yellow came because this period has been a big growth in my life, and that was somehow it's like the sun shining, and it was this lightness that I felt. Uh, some of my previous work is quite dark, and probably it's. To be related with my psychological growth, also, and just being more calm and at peace and more happy as a person, 
Um, so this, the yellow actually comes from this sense of lightness and sense of joy and sun that, that I'm experiencing this period of my life. Now I'm not sure uh, what's going to be next. Um, I, I'm, I'm having new concepts in my mind that are not color, color re related. Um, it's more geometry related. So I think some of the next uh, works is gonna be it's gonna be more around sacred geometry and um, lines and um, studies that are not necessarily color um, oriented. Thank you. Go first. <laughs> yes, I'm fortunate. I, the other day, I I was I always interested in it, in this topic of how artists could survive, whether in this city or anywhere. is is a miracle. Artists could survive. The, Either you are you are a dancer, you are a drama artist, uh, an actor. I think, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, with, uh, beside the the, the, the the question of money, I think um, you only live once, right? So um, I do teach. I have. Uh, I have an on online course about uh, uh, art practice and then art business. How, how, how do you survive with, with your art? I do answer this question with the online, online course. I also uh, work with dealers and galleries and clients that they could find me to do the commission works. But uh, yes, I do know it's very difficult for most artists anywhere. It's, it's a luxury if you could find a way to survive with your art. But as uh, the other day, I, I listened to uh, my art, artist hero, Julian Schnabel. He talks, he talks about Van Gogh. Uh, everyone thought Van Gogh is uh, it's not a winner because he, he couldn't survive with his art, uh, so the legend said. And the, the, the fact that he didn't sell any painting during his lifetime. But regardless if uh, whether his works can survive uh, after his death, the real matter is he gets to do what he wants. He gets to do what he loves, and he already won that war. So, what's that dripping? It keeps dripping, some, something dripping up to my body. It's horrible. Okay, so yes, uh, I think um, it's a big question, it's a big topic for how artists survive, but I do think. Uh, is more important is enjoy what you what you can do and what you and do what you what you love with with a lifetime a very limited lifetime we all have right yeah. I don't think uh, I, I I'm not sure if you have any similar yeah very much um, very much um, actually my entire family are artists from the um, performing art, singing, sculptor, um, fine art. Well, so aunties, uh, grandparents, 
mother, father, they were all somehow in the art or because they were teaching music or because they were performing artists or because they were just artists like my mom or musician like my dad. So, so my background was always seeing that people live from their art in some ways. However, um, my parents died when I was little. So my grandma who raised me, she really put it into my mind. Don't be an artist. <laughs> because you can't count on surviving as an artist. So this was the detour in a way in saying, I want to be an artist, but I can't. Um, and I'm still in transition. I'm in transition today um, because design, project management gives me a kind of livelihood um, that now it starts to be more and more taken over with, with art, making art. And I told myself, even if I'm not as productive as my mind would want me to be, as my ideas are very fast, I'm still making art. Slower than I would love to, but I'm doing it and I'm happy. And at this stage, I don't even care, of course I care, but not so much whether I'm gonna be a living of my art in one year or in 10 years. I know that this is my direction and every day that I paint is a better day. So other than, of course, the money question, there's also the question of community and being surrounded by like-minded people. And that's also something you're day by day building. So I'm offering a workshop to lay people, anybody really who who is an artist or, or not an artist or want to be an artist, um, that is called Art Flow, where we go into meditation, we spend some time in silence and listening, and then we will start painting from that space of boldness, freedom, inspiration. And it's unbelievable to see what people who never touch the brush are capable of doing when they tune into themselves, when they start to activate their right side of the brain, the creative side of the brain. And even people are surprised. So I'm offering these workshops. Um, it's not really changing my budget, <laughs> but it's changing um, my community. And that's very important. Fun. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. That's it. You can you can speak Cantonese. See you soon. <laughs>